Are you starving for listings right now? Because I think most people are saying, how in the world in this current market am I going to get some listings? My buddy, Nick Shivers, has cracked the code on this and has transformed his business. My name's Eric Hatch of Hatch Realty and Hatch Coaching, and we are excited to bring to you today how to get more listings. Probably the sexiest topic we could ever cover outside of how two bald men actually get <laughs> gorgeous women in our lives and yet nick and i are married up and we are follicle challenged nonetheless uh nick i am so thrilled to be here with you buddy thank you so much in advance yeah and you know eric i will say i'm the original bald guy out of the group so there's not too many things i lead the way with with you but that was the first <laughs> uh we're going to talk about listings and and let's just give people a, a, a tease here because if we don't tease them in the beginning they're not going to stick around in the end uh Nick, how many homes did your team sell last year and what percent of those were listings? Okay, we were at 424 homes sold. And that's out of the Portland, Oregon and Vancouver. Portland Metro, yeah. And 70%. Okay, that's, uh, that's up. You did like 350 deals the year before, right? Yep, that is correct. You know, from 350 to 424. And what percent uh, were, your, were you doing for buyers the year before? And we were we were at, we, we were at like uh, sixty one point three percent sellers in twenty twenty, and then if you go pre COVID, because pre COVID is right, you know, twenty nineteen, we were I think we were at fifty seven percent buyers and uh, forty three. So okay. we've so always we been forty three percent to sixty percent to seventy percent listings, and you increased your sales. That is correct. Okay. Uh, you're a, you're like not the smartest guy I know when no. it comes to details and other things. And like, <laughs> how, how do I not throw you under the bus? Because we we just joke about Nick's uh, poor attention to details. And yet you are a maverick. You are a pirate, my dude, on how to go and to change your business into a listing focused, highly profitable, unbelievably successful business. Uh, and so whether you are a solo agent, if you're on a team, whatever it may be, we have some stuff for you today. Uh, we're going to steal all Nick's ideas and you can do it in your market. But before we get there, Nick, share with these beautiful people how you and I met. How does this bromance go back so many years? Uh, because we've ended up doing some really, really cool things together. Okay, so uh, and correct me, you know, I, I am getting old, so uh, my... Uh, short-term memory starts fading. But um, I think uh, it was originally we went to a little uh, dinner in Dallas and you got stuck with my crotchety old CEO that I, have, I eventually fired. That's true. I, was, I was in a mastermind with a crotchety CEO that you had. Yeah, uh, he's a good guy. Then, he is a good guy. Yeah, but yeah. he is crotchety. <laughs> the best crotchety guy I know. Uh, <laughs> I, I I had heard, because God had put it on my heart that I was to use my business uh, to start an orphanage. And I'm like, is anybody doing this? I, I, I could go and be uh, this trailblazer myself. But I had heard that you were using your business to save kids. What was that all about? Yeah. So like, like you said, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. So um, in 2004, I decided that I was going to build a resort in Nicaragua. Had, had I ever built a resort? No. I hadn't even built a subdivision, but I was going to build a resort in a foreign country, not even America. I was doing it in a foreign country. Um, and that's what happens uh, when you combine a bottle of uh, rum, uh, a late night and uh, a napkin. That was my business plan and a Jimmy Buffett song, Eric. So um, so I was in Nicaragua building a resort and failed miserably, but got out another plan. And I walked through a garbage dump where kids were being trafficked. And um, I call it the, the realm of responsibility. My responsibility just uh, increased because now I had seen something that I'd only heard or maybe saw a TV commercial. Um, and so from that day forward, it, it, that changed my life. Um, and the, the Jimmy Buffett song still rings true, but it's helping kids, not Nick. So, so you're down there, you uh, think you're going to be building a resort. What changed uh, your, your perspective, your experience, the things you saw, what changed? Because that's what drew us together. Yeah. Um, well, number one, uh, <laughs> I didn't have a damn clue what I was doing. Um, I had made political connections with the current administration down there because in Nicaragua, a, a knucklehead like me can set with the president. 
um, and uh, it changed drastically. And so I had to go out and, and try to make new connections. And at, at that point, my wife said, you're an idiot, stop. Um, and she goes, and then she was with me. We went through the garbage dump. Um, we saw the kids and I knew, you know, I had young children as well at the time. And, and Eric, I always say this, I, I wish I could say that I wanted to be a hero, but I didn't, I just wanted to leave because I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to feel that and like, oh my gosh, I can't even believe this stuff is happening. But I mean, uh, got out of living, living in the garbage dumps in the most God awful of conditions. And you're there experiencing it for the first time. Right smell um and you, you can't ever forget that you can't ever forget when you see trucks coming in and little girls lining up and getting in the trucks and uh you can imagine what i i mean it was overwhelmingly sad and uh uh my wife goes you know nick we can leave but those those uh those kids can't so that's kind of what uh, started me i came back eric and i said okay this this I'm a grinder. I'm a blue collar guy that has grinded his whole life. And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to grind. And when I feel like a little, little, uh, want to sleep in, I, I, I remember putting the pictures of some of the kids that we had met there on my mirror. And every morning when I was getting up early and I didn't want to get up early, I didn't want to make my calls. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to do that and go, stop. Are you kidding me? Uh, look where you live. Look what you have. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, so I had caught wind that Nick took this passion after his heart was wrecked uh, in Nicaragua and used his business to help starting to save kids and starting to make a difference. And so as I was searching on a way in which to take my ministerial uh, hearts in which to serve other people, Nick and I found each other and we kind of looked at each other to say, we can't be the only people that are passionate about this. We can't be the only ones that want to make a difference. And uh, a couple of gatherings later, we started a movement called Sell a Home, Save a Child. That's at sellahomesaveachild.org. And to date, over the last five or six years, us and our partners have raised over $3 million uh, to help rescue kids around the world. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, I, th th this matters so much because y'all need to understand the heart of this guy and the drive of this guy as we're going to talk about how to get listings. And actually... Nick is able to use Sell a Home, Save a Child as a platform in which to get more listings too, uh, and in which to capture and to protect his commissions. So we're going to talk about all that, but you need to understand before we dive into all the details that Nick and I, six months after our encounter, were in a dance contest against one another. And this dance contest went for an hour and a half. We were the final Marathon. contestants. Uh, I've never burned so many calories in my life. Uh, but this dance contest, Nick ends up winning. I take second place uh, and we became uh, a bromance of all bromances. So I'll save you the details of me worming across the floor and taking my shirt off and instead just saying uh, I'm here for uh, <laughs> learning about listings. So I can just remember that night and I was sitting there thinking, I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm 10, 11 years older than you, but I was like, how can this dude still be moving? Because it was like four or five hour marathon. I'm like, I'm about ready to have a heart attack. And I, and I, at the end, I just jumped on your back because I'm like, he's just going to fall down and I'll, I'll be on top of him. I'll win for sure. But you just kept going, Eric. You're a beast. You're a beast. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, <laughs> with that being said, Nick, walk us through the very simple thing that you saw when COVID hit yeah. and how you decided to go from being basically 40% buyers to 40% sellers to now 70% sellers in your business. Okay. Well, so I have made a lot of mistakes in my life and I have never been good at getting mentors. So uh, all the mistakes that like you learn from other people, I did myself. So I've been through, I've been through 2008. I've been through 2001. I, I've been in this game for, for a long time. You, and you've, been, you've, been selling, you've been selling real estate 25 plus years, right? Now. Uh, 2000 is when I started. Okay. Um, so uh, when COVID hit, I thought we were, and I was completely wrong. I, I thought 2008, nine, all over again. This is, this is apocalyptic. And I'm like, oh, yeah. so, so many, so many houses for sale and nobody wants to buy them. Right. I, I thought, the, I thought the same thing, Nick. Yep. So what I did is I moved quick because, uh, and, and I started slashing, you know, I think I was spending at the time you know, 15 grand a month in buyer lead gen. I cut it off. I cut everything. I even cut, 
I went to my radio stations on my listing stuff and I, I cut everything. And I told everybody, bat in the hat, it's going to be a rough ride. And because a- you, you were willing to cut your marketing before you cut your people, right? Like, yeah. Like any anybody who is in it, you have to have a plan. And, and most of the people watching this right now, Nick, I don't think they have a plan for their business. I think that we let the we let the tide take us wherever it's going to go. Uh, and we don't have much of a plan. We don't have an actual motor in the water. Uh, we just say wherever the wind's going to take us, that's where we're going to go. And, and you saw because of past pains and because of this, you said, I got to cut expenses right now. I, I don't want to go back to where I was two years ago. But I did the same. I, I, I looked to cut expenses and I didn't want to cut people, but I thought I was going to lose my business. Right, right. And, and I think you have to look, because uh, I have, I am not, like you said earlier, I'm not a planner. I am not a systems guy. I am a, a, a grinder guy. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not a businessman. I'm a sales guy. I love sales. I love people. So, so when we're talking plans, it's not like I had a, I have a 20 page business plan. I have a, I have a Jimmy Buffett napkin plan, but it's, it's but, the plan. But, but, you, it, but look at this, you take action. And that's, yeah. that's the, that's the thing that I have to get to when I talk about a plan is you said, I need to make a move. I need to go and I have to take action instead of just waiting to see you're going to go and buy a resort. You're going to go and start a nonprofit. You're going to go and cut all of your lead gen expense. Yes. And that's what we did. And for about three weeks, I was right. Um, and then after that, it went crazy. Now, I didn't just cut. I went to my vendors and said, listen, I've been with you guys forever. What I'm looking for is I, I, I need I need some cushion here. Um, you know, I want to cut it. You know, if I was spending, let's say, $20,000 on radio, I need to spend $3,000 on radio. And I need you to continue to give me what that looks like. Um, we're in this together. I want but we're in this together. So uh, that's what we did for about three weeks, Eric, I was right. And then it it all went, (laughs) as we know, and we're still in that, it went crazy. Yeah. Um, And because of what's happening with the, the massive supply and demand issues, being on the listing side is, is a win. On the buy side, it's a struggle, at least in my market. You know, my agents are, uh, it's 20, you know, sometimes there's 20, 30 offers on each listing. Um, So that is how we started. Now, the interesting thing is I looked, 2019, we did 135 buy side units, okay? And that was, in 2020, we did 148. And then in 2021, we did 139. So, Spending fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month in two thousand nineteen on buy sides, we did one thirty five. Spending zero in buy side lead generation in twenty twenty one, we still sold one hundred and thirty nine. And so that that, was- that's that stayed the same, Nick. Right, your yep. buy side stayed the same. That you were doing twelve a month, right? 12, twelve buys a month. You were paying fifteen grand. Now you're paying zero grand for it, and your buy side hasn't changed. How in the hell did you pull that off? Yeah, that's, uh, I, I made some, some uh, gut decisions because I'm, that's, you know, God has blessed me with a, a pretty decent gut. Um, and so in Oregon, we, I looked, it, the interesting thing, I was reading a great book at the time this all happened. It was called The Pumpkin Plan. Okay. And the biggest thing that I took out of that book is and that's hey, by Mike Michalowicz, by the way, uh, uh, known for Profit First and other things. The Pumpkin Plan is such a rock solid book. So yeah. continue. I I said okay. I can't. I don't want to just make uh, all kinds of pumpkins. What am I good at? Okay. And so when I sat down with my team, I said, I said, what are we good at? And we the, we're better than anybody at what is that and we're good at listings not only are our top agents the listing agents our admin team rocks listings rocks listings and i said okay that is what we're gonna stick with i don't care that things are starting to change Uh, we we are gonna focus on that only and it started there so let me, let me break down the pumpkin plan for you. They give seven different steps in order to grow these. 
blue ribbon winning county fair recognizing pumpkins. The ones that if you go to a pumpkin patch, everybody takes their picture with and everybody covets and wants. No, nobody cares about the gourds. Nobody cares about the small pumpkins. They just care about the big pumpkin. And so there's seven steps in which to do so. Uh, and, and step number six says, give all your attention to your big pumpkins. And Nick, what you're telling me is your big pumpkin, you said is listings. And instead of you trying to be great at buys and invest and everything else, you said it's listings and listings only that you're going to focus on. That's that right? correct. Yeah. And, and listings also, you know, on the investment side, because we, we do, a, my agents invest, I invest a lot. Listings will get investing. So, so even though everything that we did, we focus on that. We're best at that. And it allows me to, because again, we all get the shiny objects. Oh, you got to do this new lead generation. And I'm like, okay, what is, what is that going to generate? Buyers, 70% is buyer. And I go, I'm not doing it because that's not what we're best at. And we, and to this day, that's what we do. What's best for the listing side of the business. That's what we're going to do. If it doesn't focus there, we're not going to do it. But like, Nick, my business in terms of transaction count and team size is bigger than yours. Yes. I don't have the balls that you have, man. In order to, I, I am reliant on Zillow and I'm reliant on pay-per-click leads. I'm scared to death of turning it off. I can't be the only person that's listening right now being like, I'm scared to death of going all in on listings because it's going to dry up. Tell me it's not going to dry up. Why? Why? Why is it not going to dry up? Well, I, I think uh, a lot of smarter people than me, whether you, you like him or not, Gary Keller says listings is everything. Okay. What does listings do? It gets signs in the yard. What does listings do? It gets listings on Zillow, realtor.com. What does it do? Those people are going to, those people are selling. Now in Oregon, it's a little bit unique. Okay. I would say that I probably have a, uh, a conservative niche. Why? Because I'm on conservative talk and Christian radio. Okay. Um, and so. And, 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 and Portland and Oregon are, are tend, they tend to be a little more liberal. So you have, you have a loud voice in a, a particular niche instead of just trying to spam the entire market. Exactly. Now, the negative to that is those people aren't staying. A lot of conservatives that are leaving are leaving out of the state. But the fact is, if you're in an area that is maybe relocating in different areas, migrating, but not necessarily out of the state. The more listings you have, the more buyers you're going to generate. Um, like right now for us, Eric, is we, we are, because we focus so much on listings and my, how I grow my team is really kind of an organic way. We, we're missing a ton of opportunity on the buy side because of what we've done on the listing side. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, we look at, so if I look at my uh, GCI, okay, our GCI is 5.1 million on the list side and 1.7 on the buy side, okay? That's 151 million volume on the list side and 70 million volume on the buy side. The profit margins are outrageously stronger on the listing side than it is on the buy side. And my personal I, 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 want, I want to slow this down just a moment. Okay, okay folks. Uh, Nick sold $150 million worth of volume of listings and $70 million on buys. It was two to one. Uh, your actual GCI of commissions earned uh, was almost three to one, if I understood that correctly, right? That is so correct. Even though you sold twice as many listings to buys, your GCI, which is your top line revenue, you made three times the amount on listings as you did on the buy. But if you're talking the actual profit margin now, that's what you're getting to. And the profit margin is what matters because the rest are just ego measuring things. The actual profit margin, why is the profit so much higher on listings than it is on buys? Well, I don't know. My personal belief is in the next five to six years, there, there might not be any buyer agent commission. So our average listing side commission is 3.36 okay so you're, Our, that that's not that's not to pay both sides that's just for your side yes that you're, is just you're for controlling side. uh both with using sell a home save a child because that's what you're funding and, and mm -hmm. everything else but you're controlling the marketing and the experience and the servicing of and so you're able to charge a higher amount right 
That is correct. Yeah. Buy side's about 2.1. <laughs> uh, and it's, and that, that is, uh, that is going to continue to be compressed. I mean, we're looking at, you know, like with uh, the iBuyers now, they're giving, they, they'll give 2% on the BAC. So, some of the builders in town are giving zero, yeah. zero. And that's going to be a trend that I don't believe that that's changing. So obviously you need to, you need to focus on listings. I, I think that that is paramount. And if anybody's watching this and that's new information for you, uh, well, welcome to uh, where we're finding ourselves. We need to focus on listings, but Nick, you're actually focusing on listings. You're not just saying it, you're living it out. So what are some of the things that you're doing with your marketing and the daily habits with your team in order to find these opportunities? Well, we'll start with marketing. So again, I think um, depending where you're at and, and some of it is uh, we focus on a niche. Our niche is, uh, is conservative, okay? Um, and so where we market is traditionally conservative areas. Conservative radio, Christian radio, those are, and, and again, those are the two for our listings. We do a generic type listing uh, generation through like iBuyer offers and stuff like that, Google, but it's all still, even though it goes out to everyone and not just conservative, it's, it's listing generated. But our, our focus is listing generated, conservative. So what does your radio message sound like? If I were driving through the Portland Metro and I was listening to one of these radio stations, what does this radio ad sound like? So basically it's sell your home your way. Get an instant offer to sell immediately or a traditional listing to, to, for maximum value. It's your choice. Everything I do in our market is you'll get an instant offer and you'll get a traditional list price. It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Most, and th this is so important, Nick, because I think that most realtors are advertising, I'm a great realtor and come and work with me. And, and imagine a, a restaurant says, I'm a great restaurant, come and eat here. Uh, well, what's on your menu? Well, I have what every other restaurant has, but I'm better at it. That, that's what most realtors are saying is, I have the same as everybody else's restaurant, but my food is better. Uh, and, and what you're saying is we have a menu of options for you and you're advertising it in a simple, repeatable, memorable sort of way. That is correct. Every, everything that we do. And, 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 and again, <laughs> I, 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 I got interviewed by Inman about Open Door and um, I got all kinds of people saying, I can't believe you're, you're promoting them. I said, I didn't promote them. What I said was that they are uh, a option for a group of people. And if I, agents all the time like to say they are ripping people off. No, they're, they're not ripping people off. They're giving them an offer. And if the person wants to accept it because of the circumstances, they're gonna accept the offer. Now you as an agent have the, the opportunity to make sure that you stay in place because you bring the knowledge to the thing. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you're going to leave $15,000 on the table. Are you okay with that? And if you are, I would suggest that we do that. And if you're not, then yes, you should list with me. It, it's, it's a convenience fee is really what it is. Uh, folks, if you're not familiar with, uh, with iBuyers uh, and, and what's happening, certainly Zillow, uh, Zillow's offers made the headlines more than anyone else on this as of recent, uh, but there are uh, Open Door and OfferPad as well as Nick and myself, I stole Nick's idea on this, uh, is I became my own iBuyer as well. And so we're purchasing a number of properties. Nick is making uh, a really healthy amount of cash just buying these properties or introducing them to these other companies. But you're right. Every agent could advertise what you're advertising. Everybody, yes. everybody could. If you're in a major, if you're in a major market right now, and you have not yet connected with Open Door, if they're in your market, they are willing to pay you to introduce them to properties as well as represent the buy side on it. And so there's there's some pretty crazy cash that's out there. Just you, you know what? I tell my agents this all the time. I go, you're not getting paid for your time. You're getting paid for your experience. So whether it takes you five minutes to put a deal together or five years, 
okay? It's, it's your experience. And us as agents, we need to understand all the options, whether it's, you know, the Knox trade-in program or open doors offers or offer pad offers or uh, Blackstone coming in and renting prop. You better, you need to understand that aspect. Mm -hmm. Now, again, all that aspect to me is all about listings. So focusing on your niche, what you're good at and, and staying there because we can get all crazy all the time. Just stay there. The second thing is I train my agents. I don't, I'm not training them on buy side stuff. I let like, I'll, I'll put teams together because uh, your model, I'll put teams together and my head agent will teach them. But all that I'm training on is how to be an incredible listing agent, how to understand both the, the instant offer for that client that wants that and a traditional listing and being able to, to articulate that so the consumer can make the best choice. But Nick, that's so countercultural because teams are built on the buy side, uh, adding a bunch of agents that they all do the buy side. You're doing a bunch of agents that do the listing side. How in the world are you getting them prepared for that? Because I think that we are so slow to let go of listings because there, there, are, golden, uh, there are golden eggs. We don't want to let those go. Right. So here's an example. Okay. I have a, uh, my newest guy. Um, now he is uh, an old timer like me. He's about my age. Um, he was in the same, same, uh, he was in the car business for about 20 years management and he, he almost died this year. And so he was like, man, I'm not going to, I, I, the car business is done. He now he's been with me six months in the last 90 days. He took five listings, six listings. And so far this month, I think he's taken three listings. So you don't have to be in this business for a long, long time. Here's, there's, there's two things, I think. Number one, connect. If you know how to connect with people, you're going to be successful. And number two, confidence. How do you gain confidence? You know the market. You understand the data. Supply and demand, you understand it. And you don't have to be in this business 20 years to, to understand people and the market. All the other stuff could be leveraged out. And that's what we do on our team. And I know a lot of the teams out there, those are the key. Connect and then confidence. And how do you get confidence is knowledge on the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, a number of trainings and boot camps and everything else that, that help people to be high performing agents. And that's the first thing that we talk about is that it is, it is a relationship connection piece and if you don't master that you're not going to have anything else this is this is was is and will always be a relationship game and now technology and market things are, are the way in which you make yourself seem like an expert uh there are uh, a couple of questions i want to get to here nick as we go first of all tara points out that this looks like a noose it's it's a light bulb uh but you're the second person to tell me it looks like a noose so now I have to take it down because I just don't want this creepy uh, news hanging in my background. So uh, thanks for the decorating tip, Tara. Um, here's a question. This comes from Chad Massacre. Uh, why conservative and Christian? A personal choice or is there a psychodemographic element that makes them more likely to react to the ad? Um, a little bit of both um, because I would say I am a middle of the road conservative and I am a Christian. So I believe that uh, with what we do with sell a home, save a child, um, it connects with everybody, but especially in that, in that group, uh, uh, Christian group, they, they, it's really an important aspect. Um, the second thing is, is because of politically, I see what, who's, who's coming in and who's moving out. And since I focus on listings, who's, who's moving out? A lot of conservatives. Um, Example, my, all my lead indicators are how many listings and how many listing uh, appointments we have. So in 2022, first month, the market was down for listings taken 20%. In 2021, we took 23 listings for the month. In 2022, we took 23 listings for the month. So there's two things I looked at. I'm like, the market's down 20%. We're doing good. And my number one sales guy has been in the hospital for almost two months. So that lead indicator says we're still, we're still doing good. We're still doing good. 
my market is down about 35% in the month of January, and we are down 35% for the month in January for, uh, for pended deals. And that is simply based on probably us being really focused on buyers. Like this is, this is really valuable stuff. Uh, I, I have a question here from Ron. Uh, he says, are you using a platform like Zavi to give seller, to give seller options for iBuyers? No, because I, I connect with the guys directly. Um, Zabby, uh, will I mean, it's it it can be it can be a, a great little platform. But for me, I have relationships with all the buyers anyway, so uh, I'm not using Zabby. You're talking, the, you're talking the institutional buyers. Yeah, that is yeah. correct. Okay, um, Chad Dempsey asked this. I think everybody watching is named Chad right now. Uh, but Chad mm -hmm. Dempsey asks, uh, uh, he needs some more at bats. So we talked about radio. Uh, what are some other things that you're doing for marketing? Well, let me give you an example. Um, okay, so I had a, a, a guy, I think it was about a year ago, like early 2020. He goes, Nick, I'm moving to Idaho. I'm like, you sure about that? And he goes, yep. That, that young man had been our ISA. He's now like 22. He started off as an ISA and then he moved into an agent here. But the one thing that he knew how to do is get on the phone and nobody knows how to do that anymore because it's not fun. And he went to, he went to um, uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, one of the most competitive markets in the country. He'd never been there and he knew no one and he created listings. He did like, he was there for like six months and he sold about 13 houses and there were no houses to sell. Now he's in, in Whitefish, Montana doing the same thing. Why? Because he knows how to get on the phone. So there is a lost art. I mean, there is nothing on the market. Call people up and say, hey, we have 10 buyers. The market is crazy. You're going to get incredible uh, prices for your house. Have you ever thought about selling? I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's always a lot of people want to find the passive way. The reality is that this is a contact sport, in my opinion, and thank goodness it is, because I don't do I don't know how to do anything else besides that 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 contact sport. And you can still have an incredible business, like a young a kid that knows no one in a market, and he's going out and getting deals because he's getting on the phone. And I don't think as many people do that uh, anymore as they used to. So what's, what's interesting about that, I go back to my time. I'm a former Keller Williams agent and I have nothing but love uh, for KW. And I, I went through KW's bold class in 2012. A lot of people have gone through that. And I don't know if it's still offered, but a bold is business objective, a life by design. And uh, there is the challenge where you're to make a hundred contacts in a day. And I remember doing that. And the most of the people I called were of my sphere. And I'm like, oh man, I felt like I was transactionalizing them because here, here would be the script. And I even hate that word script, but here would be the script. I'd say, hey, Nick, it's Eric with, uh, with Keller Williams Realty. Um, say, uh, I'm in a competition right now. And my goal is to find as many people looking to buy, sell, or invest as possible. Who do you know that I can talk to today, right? I took who I was in a personal relationship with, my buddy Nick, and I instead transactionalized it. And so I was like, oh, I don't feel good doing that. And I loved the idea of actually you said it's a contact sport. I love the idea of making those contacts regularly and, and staying on top of it. I just didn't love the script that was provided. So let me give you a different script. Uh, hey, Nick, it's Eric with Hatch Realty. Do you have a quick minute? I want to talk business with you. Sure. Okay. Notice that very first thing is you frame it with saying this is a business call. Don't talk about his personal life for 10 minutes and then try to swoop in and surprise him with a business conversation because you end up souring that, that, uh, that taste. And instead of say, Nick, right now, I've never seen a market like this and homes are selling for more than I ever expected possible. H have you and your wife ever considered uh, putting your house on the market or do you know of anybody that'd be interested? Because there's more cash to grab right now than there ever has before. Yeah. Okay. And, and I don't think that people have. Uh, I don't think that people have issues with finding uh, opportunities. I think that people have issue with following through on opportunities. Uh, most of you that are watching this, if you follow our hash coaching stuff, we're, we talk a lot about teams and we talk a lot about using leverage. Most of y'all's databases, if you have a team, have ten or twenty thousand people plus in them. But we're wondering where am I going to go and get more leads? And I, I this I don't think it's I don't think it's a lead problem. I think it's I think it's a leadership problem. Nick, would you agree with that? I think that most people are gun shy to follow through on the names and information that they already have. 
Yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, a and 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 I've been raised my hand. I've done a really bad job. We do an incredible job for our clients. So that's why we're still like at 33%, maybe even 40%. I don't know the exact number, ask clients and referrals. But we we are we until up until this year, we've done a horrible job with continual follow-up and 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 making sure we we stay in relation. I I have uh, several parties and that's where I stay in contact. I sent out a, a little thing, but but that is the gold mine. That is the gold mine. Um, if you do a good job, if you but, but stay in contact, stay, you got to have some, a little bit of organization there. And again, I've, I've, I've done a horrible job of that. And I still get a ton of referrals because we do a great job. And I believe um, with just a little bit of focus, remember what we're talking about, focus. With the, we, we, we went and focused on listings. We saved ourselves fifteen to $20,000 a month in compared to 2019. And we did four more buyers with zero spend. Why? Because uh, of focus. So focus on that little aspect. You can't focus on everything. Just focus on one aspect. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would say if you are changing the conversations you're having with people, let's say, you're like us and you spend a lot of money on pay-per-click leads and Zillow leads and that sort. It's very easy to reach out to them and to talk about the buy because that's the sexy side, but nobody's talking to them about the sell. Nobody's uh, informing them. I think it's our job to be the news to our clients, uh, past, current, uh, present, that sort, and, and to let them know what's going on. So I think that uh, the challenge would be to change up some of your conversations, but not sit idly by and wait for the phone to ring. Nick, you've created a machine that the phone is ringing now because of what you are spending on marketing. Is there anything else that you're spending on besides radio right now? Yeah, we, we have a, a few, you know, data point leads and stuff like that, um, where, I mean, they're, they're, they're again, all focused on, hey, you, you, you want to sell your house, get an instant offer, that kind of stuff. That's, that is our internet type stuff yeah. that we do. And they're, they're a follow-up. The, the key to that is just massive follow-up. Um, but, but I mean, I, my agents kept saying that they were terrible leads and I go, really, are they terrible leads? And then I started calling them just to show it. And I got two flips out of it. Yeah. Uh, and so there, you have to have a little bit of self sense of urgency as well. Okay. In this market, you got to grind. Um, you got to grind. You got a sense of urgency, man. You got to go because it is go time right now. There's incredible opportunities to make a ton of money. Um, but, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a great question here. Uh, tell us about this listing presentation. Cause let's say you're, you are good enough. You've created the marketing to get the app bat. Uh, when you are at the listing presentation, what's your USP, your unique selling proposition, or what are you doing in order to win those so often? We give them options. Here's your instant offer here, but, but again, it starts way before that. Okay. When you go out on a listing presentation, you better know, they, they might say, I, I, I have to sell. Um, I want to sell. I want to move to California. But real, ask that second question. Tell me more about that. Because you better know why they want to go to California. So you better know all that before you step in. You better know what motivates them, what's really they're, what they're trying to accomplish. Okay, so when you can go out there, you can show them exactly what is it? I know when I go out on a listing appointment, if I do, um, I know if they, if they're an instant offer or not, I already know that. And uh, it well, starts with conversation. If you want to see what Nick's uh, instant offer looks like, go check out myrocketlisting.com. You can see the advertising that he's doing around it. Uh, myrocketlisting.com, uh, really valuable. Or you can go to hatchrealty.com and you can see we have four options, which I think we might be muddy in the water a little bit because we have four different options for our sellers. You're offering two and that seems you're getting more traction on this than we are. So uh, we, might, uh, we might need to simplify in order to maximize. Um, all right, Nick, there's a, a couple other questions here too. Um, if somebody feels like ugh, your listing uh, commission is so much higher, right? Uh, somebody's willing to do it for 1% or 2%. And, and if somebody wants to do a traditional listing with you, it's averaging 3.36%. How do you defend that? Well, number one, I know what my core client is. It's someone that appreciates a team of experts and willing to pay for it. Some of them you walk away from. 
Um, but then also it's your responsibility to show the difference between price and cost. Okay. So, so you, you go out there and you better show why you're worth more than everybody else. And you better bring that out front. My agent's talk, we are, we are definitely, we're probably one of the most expensive uh, uh, options out there as far as what it looks like on our commission cost. But the, the actual cost by selling one of your most valuable assets with someone that doesn't have the marketing skill and the negotiation skills can cost you a lot more than what we're charging. I think you have to be as skilled at presenting why they should use you. And I do believe that we are skilled negotiators will make our clients more money. Skilled negotiators will be able to tell them, hey, your house backs up to a freeway and this institutional investor is willing to give you more than you're going to get on the open market. You should take this offer. Uh, there's a question from another chat. Again, lots of chats here. I see at least four chats here today. Uh, any idea on what your ad ROI is broken down by medium? Yeah, uh, there. We have, I have four radio stations. I have three of them that uh, probably maybe one and a half to one. And the other one is like 10 to one. But the one and a half to one, what, what you have to understand about radio folks is uh, radio, I, I refer to as reputation business, just like uh, reviews, just like referrals that you're planting a seed now and you never know when it's going to harvest. Uh, and, and so radio is a difficult thing to measure because if you're doing a pay-per-click lead, that's really easy to say, well, they clicked on this website. So now I know Nick is Nick's team and his ISAs are doing a great job of filtering to understand where this business is coming from, uh, but they don't get it right all the time. And sometimes they maybe heard him 15 times on one radio station and then they go to his website to sign up and it shows as a, a website they when really it was the radio that was the catalyst. And the other thing is credibility. Even if, if they didn't call you from the radio, oh, I've heard, mm -hmm. I've heard you guys on the radio. It's just a credibility piece. So that's kind of invaluable. So even, even if I broke even on certain uh, aspects of radio, um, I would, I would be okay with it. Yeah. Uh, Reputation business is uh, a hard one to play. Uh, Nick, are you doing any Google ads for this? Nope. None. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you're spending how much on radio a month? Mm, I would say we're probably 20 grand a month. Okay. Now, for some people, 20 grand seems uh, absolutely crazy. I spend about five grand a month on radio in Fargo, and that's one station. One of the things I do have that I would actually encourage all of you to look into is I have my own real estate radio show, and I've had it for the last decade. I'm on the largest, oh, here, here's what's interesting. Portland is a very liberal market and you found a conservative niche. Fargo is a very conservative market and I found a liberal niche. I'm middle of the road on, on almost everything, uh, but our liberal radio station is our biggest top radio station. And I've gone and, and I have my own radio show, 30 minutes a week, 52 weeks a year, and it costs me $1,000 a month. I then get vendors to pay for my entire show, but everybody who listens believes that I am the authority and I'm hired by the radio station that they're paying me. What they don't understand is that I'm paying them, mm -hmm. uh, but they believe that I am this expert in real estate. And I certainly hope that I am, but I use it as a platform to talk about sellers. You can talk about buyers and you'll get buyer business, but if you talk about sellers, you get seller business. So you can then also take that and you can regurgitate a lot of that stuff onto different platforms. So if I video uh, my uh, my entire radio show, I can take that little 30 second great soundbite and put that on an Instagram reel, or I can put that uh, on Facebook. I can email that to my clients. And so you can get a whole bunch of content uh, by, by pouring just one thing in. Gary V talks a lot about that. Um, explain uh, my rocket listing for folks, Nick. Yeah. So again, knowing what I can't compete with a... Um, institutional open door. It used to be also Zillow. I can't compete with a cookie cutter house. It's not really beat up. Okay. So, but guess what? I met with Eric Wu, the CEO of open door, like five years, six years ago. And I knew what they were doing. And I'm like, the guy said, and it's coming to fruition. He's very smart. He says, I don't need to make money for 10 years. They're not making money. Okay. But their stock is worth billions of dollars. Okay. So I'm like, that guy's really smart. 
and I'm going to bring the concept to the market before they did. So I, I had a bigger buyer box before they came in. Now my buyer box is properties that are either luxury that they won't take with acreage or they're completely beat to crap. Okay. Yeah. Those uh, are my box. Open door offer pads, Zillow offers. They wanted something that they could turn quick, lipstick on a pig, right? Yep. Uh, floor coverings, paint, uh, shrubs, that's about it. Right. So, so you're, you're, you're taking the ones that are either higher risk. Well, you are taking the ones that are higher risk uh, and those that are really beat down. And they have bigger upside. So that's what we're taking. We basically just say, come in there. We, we have a, our, 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 probably what we're looking at is about 84% on the dollar. Um, that's kind of what really our numbers, if I looked last year's number, it's about 84 cents on the dollar. And are then you, with, are you going to pay commissions on that too, Nick? Yep, we are. Okay. Okay. And then value add, it's all value add. It needs to be, it needs to be, um, uh, uh, something that you can, with your skill set, you you can make it a value. Yeah. Now it's all market specific. We're closer. If I if I factor in commissions, we're closer to about seventy five cents on the dollar that we're able to purchase properties at, and you're buying more at eighty four cents on the dollar. So anywhere in that range, uh, we have we have some huge resources at Hatch Coaching uh, for those of you wanting to do things a little more seriously with iBuyers. So feel free to reach out to me, uh, and we're going to send a follow up email to those of you watching live also, and that'll be offered for you. Uh, we're going to run out of time here uh, very quickly. I got to say just a couple of things, and then I'm going to go to Nick for some final thoughts of things that we didn't cover. Uh, number one is uh, if you are interested in that iBuyer stuff, uh, we have some opportunities to help you get a little more educated and to be in a network and a mastermind where we're working on getting better every time. So if that's of interest to you, let me know. Number two is uh, starting tomorrow. It's the 15th of February right now, 2022. Starting tomorrow, we kick off a four week boot camp on how to grow and build a great real estate team. And so I have hopefully all the steps, tricks, and everything else that you need to know. This boot camp is of massive value for you and your organization. And if you want to jump on that, I'll have a link for you as well. Uh, that's the only pitch that I have here, but I, I do want to provide people with opportunity because I know guys like Nick and I mastermind together all the time and us working together continues to give one another opportunities to grow our worlds and to grow our wealth. So uh, what I want you to do, Nick, is I want you to give us what, you, what do we need to know? What do we not hear? Uh, what is our to-go message uh, for today? You, 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 you must, in my opinion, you have to stay in the know with what's going on. Not, not only in the real estate game, look what investors are doing, institutional investors are doing. And that is going to kind of give you the trends because we're in a volatile uh, real estate world. Okay. With inflation, you got to, I mean, I saw an article, I saw an article the other day, CNN, that said, you know, inflation's good for the most, the average American and what a crock of crap. Okay. You make sure that the sources that you're listening to have real information that's going to be useful for your sellers and your buyers, because I think that that is our job. If we are the, the knowledge brokers, you will always be able to stay in this game. If you're not, then you're going to be out the door because uh, there's a lot of money coming in to make sure that we are not in the game. So Nick, what's your next move? What do you see coming down the shoe? Because you've been a bit of a profit on some of this stuff. What's, what's happening now? Uh, Mexico for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start uh, Open Door in Mexico. That's what, what I'm doing. Uh, como se dice Open Door in, in Espanol? Open Door. Okay, there it is. <laughs> well, what, do you, what do you see for the market? What do we need to know that we don't know right now? Um, I think, I think, well, I'll just tell you that as an investor, I think that one of the biggest opportunities is um, that we, we are not factoring in is there's going to be a slowdown on how quick people sell their houses because it's very difficult. Now, if you have a 2.75% interest rate and it goes up to four and a half to want to make that move, even though it's a, uh, it might be an upsize a little bit, the cost is going to kill you. Um, so I think there is going to be some opportunity on the investment side to maybe if, if, you know, you got to look at your state laws, 
to take over some of those loans in both residential and commercial, where it doesn't really matter what you pay for a property because your cash flow on the investment side, because the interest rates are so low. I see that being an opportunity. I do see more people renting. I think there's going to be a, 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 an affordability issue um, that is going to pop up real soon because I believe that our government's in a little bit of trouble of being able to, to raise rates to slow down inflation. But if you raise them too much, we're going to hit a recession. So that's what I see coming down the pipe. Uh, final question here. Uh, Dan asks if you have a listing or training program at all. Yeah, uh, Eric's putting it together for me. So yeah, we just have to wait till Eric to finish it. <laughs> uh, we we at uh, at Hatch Coaching do have a high producing agent training program. We'll put that in an email for you as well, and uh, I'll continue to give Nick uh, all the free bear hugs he wants. So it's going to be great. Uh, again, give it up for Nick Shivers, everybody. What a guy! Uh, brilliant, handsome. What else did you want me to say? That was perfect. Uh, Nick, you gave me a lot of insight uh, in this last fifty minutes, and I'm really thankful for it. Our favorite pirate, <laughs> Shivers. Thanks, everybody. Um, yeah. Let's stop here.